Hi all, welcome to the Tech Dent. So today we are starting the introduction to the graph. So this will be a series of lecture like I introduced in the previous video that I created what all things we are going to learn. So this will be the first video and here we'll learn about graph data structure and its representation. So few things that we will cover in this video are what what is the overview of graph. So basically what type of data structure a graph is and uh, we'll learn about the representation. What representation means is if you are using any programming language, how you can represent a graph in that particular programming language. Next, we'll learn about the complexity analysis of adjacency list and matrix. So these are basically the two ways in which you can represent a graph in any programming language. So we'll learn about what is the complexity analysis, what are the pros and cons of using adjacency list and matrix. So graph, it is a non-linear data structure. Uh, as you can, as you have seen in the previous video on data structure on TechGrant, we have only learned about the linear data structure, which was like array, linked list, stack, queue, those things. So this will be the first one. We have mystery, so we'll cover that also sometime in future. But all the problems of tree can be solved using graph theory. So this is basically a non-linear data structure. It contains, uh, it you can basically visualize this as a vertex u which is connected to another vertex v so this is a simple representation of graph so it consists of vertices which has data so u is the data that is contained in this graph and it is connected to another vertices which is v so the value of the other vertex can be a v it can be a number you can define your own data structure for that or you can use simple uh, adjacency list and matrix representation which we are going to discuss further down the video so edges can have weight associated with it what it means is that here when i have u to v connection so i can say that the edge weight for this is 10 u to y when it is connected to u to y it can have edge weight of 8 so in simple term you can understand this as uh, suppose uh, there is a point u and there is a point v so if i want to go from point u to point v it can take me like 10 minutes and if i want to go from point u to point y it will take me like eight minutes so that is the significance of the edge weight so it signifies that there is some time spent or some uh, value that has been added to the movement from u to v so when you traverse from u to v so that much energy has to be spent in simple terms will when we solve problem on graph then we'll come to know the significance of the edge weight also when we will discuss about bfs dfs maybe not exactly in bfs dfs but uh, as we go on to dijkstra's algorithm bellman ford algorithm then we'll come to know about the significance of edge weights next point is that mathematically represented as ordered pair of g u comma v which means that the vertex u is connected to vertex v via an edge so that is exactly what is being represented here so this is a graph of uv this just this part uh, just let me circle this out so this is the graph representation of guv which means that vertex u is connected to vertex v or this is uh, when i say mathematical formula it means that this this is generalized for any graph so u and v can have different values like a function you can think of it as a function so finally uh, we'll learn about types of graph so once we know that uh, what is a graph so let's uh, understand what are the various types so first is director graph we have undirected graph and we have directed acyclic graph so let us see what is a director graph so in the last diagram that i made where we had uh, something like this this was u it was connected to something like this which was v so here i say that there is an arrow mark which says i have to go from u to v this means that there is a path from u to v and there is no path back from v to u so this kind of graph so suppose from here i can make another say w from here i can make another say z and from here i say make another path like this so this is say q 
and from Q I say something like this okay so this is like a directed graph because you have a path from one edge to another edge uh, one vertices to another vertices so you have only one way to traverse or you can uh, you can go from u to v you cannot come back from v to u you can go from u to z you cannot come back from z to u and similar way now if there is a graph which looks something like this let me delete this if we have a graph something like this where we have u we have v we have z from here we have x so this is a undirected graph so this does not show any arrow so it, what it means is i can go from u to v also i can come back from v to u as well so this is a undirected graph now before moving to directed acyclic graph let me take one more example of directed graph so if we have a graph like this where we have u we have v we have z and we have a path here from z to v and uh, let me delete this so i don't want to have this edge rather than this edge we have a edge like this we have edge like this so here we can go from u to z z to v and from v back to u so this is also a directed directed graph but this graph has a cycle so this is a cyclic directed graph now directed acyclic graph or dag by the name you can understand that it will be acyclic what it means that there will not be any cycle in this graph so this for example is a directed acyclic graph because i cannot come back to the initial node from where i started even this thing if i make a edge from here to here so i can go from u to v and that's it I can go from u to z, z to v, but I cannot come back to u, or I cannot come back to v, or I cannot come back to z, any of these points. So that is why this is a directed acyclic graph. It is a simple definition. So the graph will be directed and it will not form any cycle at any point in time. Now, special cases of graphs are your tree and forest. So, tree you might have known that it's a simple data structure where we have something like this uh, we have a, a vertices and it is connected to two other vertices so this is a tree and combination of tree so if i have something like this and something like this so this whole thing this whole thing together it makes a forest so this is a special type of graph and uh, all the problem of tree you can solve it using the algorithm of graph also if required but since in tree you use recursion very frequently and you are able to solve the problem so anyway is fine so th these are the type of graph next we will go into graph representation so like i told there are two ways in which we can represent first is adjacency matrix so here we have a two dimensional array of v cross v what it means is there is a two dimensional array of vertices so i create a vertex a matrix like this and we have value here say 0 1 0 0 and i say say this is a this is b this is again a this is b so what it represents is uh, it represents a graph where i have a edge from a to b and there is no edge between uh, b to a or b to b so this looks something like this this is a very simple graph i have a and i have b here so this is a 2d <coughs> array of v cross v i hope it is pretty clear so all the edge weight and all are represented by the value i give here so for now one represent that there is an edge present between a and b and zero represent that there is no edge between a and b 
and if I say something like this, say this one, it's like it's not one, it's four. So what it means is there is an edge between A and B, and the weight of edge is four here. So that is all it means. So next point is each value of the matrix represents an edge. So each value like zero, four, zero, zero, these represents an edge. So there is no edge between A to A. There is an edge between A to B. There is no edge which is back from B to A, and there is no edge between B to B. So each of these represent their own edge. Each of the value of the matrix. Then matrix value value are used to represent edge weight as well. The example I gave you initially it was one. When I made it as four, so it represents the weight of the edge, which means that from A to B, if I have to go, the weight will be four. Now what are the pros? Uh, first is finding edge is O of one operation. It's a constant time operation. So if I have to say what is the edge between B and A, I can simply say the take the index of B. So if this matrix is represented as uh, say int of in Java, if it is represented as int of some value so here you can say that what is the edge of b and a so it will be value of uh, so it will be value of 1 and 0 so this represents a edge between b and a if i have to say if what is the edge of a to b so i can simply say value of 0 and 1 so these are all pretty constant time operation so finding any edge in a uh, adjacent C matrix is order of one operation. Then removing edge is also order of one because I can simply go and say that uh, you set the value of O comma one as zero. So this this value it will be. Let me remove it rather than making it dirty. So this one rather than having a edge weight of four. We can say that make it as zero so now this graph will change and this graph will become something like this so it has two vertices and there are no edge in the graph so it's sort of a forest so this is this is the whole graph that is that we are left with after setting the edge weight. so we have removed the edge between a and b and we did it in constant time because this is the operation which is constant time operation now what is the con of using graph representation in adjacency matrix way the con is the space complexity as you can see is n square so you have to create a 2 cross 2 matrix in this case or v cross v matrix so space will always be n square adding a vertex is n square operation because you have to search for like if i have to add a vertex to b comma b or it will not be b comma b or b comma c somewhere if i have to add a new vertex or Say I have to add a new vertex here, which is C. So I need to expand this matrix. So this will be C and I have to add a C here. And then I have to then create the <coughs> edge weight between C and A. So A, this is one, this is zero, this is zero. So this operation is again, uh, or adding a new vertex in this case is n square operation. Now getting all the neighbor of a vertex is O of V operation because this will be pretty straightforward i know that uh, let me clean this up a bit so i hope all the points are clear till here if not then you can go back in video or you can put it in the comment section and i will try to get back to you so these we can delete and let us consider this as another 3 comma 3 matrix so we have something like this this is 0 let's say this is 0 this is 0 all are 0 only there is a edge between C and A so if I have to get all the neighbor of say C so I just need to go to this indices of C and then make a loop or run time complexity of O of V and pick up all the vertex or all the edges between C to A, B and C. I just need to go here, check whether C, this value is set or not or whether it is zero. 
if it is 1 then a is adjacent of c if this is also say 1 then b is also adjacent of c so this is like order of v operation so these are some of the cons now let's look at the other representation which is adjacency list so let me clean it up and in adjacency list so it is represented like a list in both the cases in programming language like java or even in python you can represent it as a map where you can say that map so we can say that a simple example i'm taking and we can create our own data structure for sure so we can say this is a map of some vertex and then it is a list of vertex so what it means is that to this vertex whatever is there in this list they are adjacent to the vertex so like how we used to say in a 2d matrix that c is next to a by setting the bit of that or setting the value for that matrix rather than that here we will say that uh, this is a vertex v and there is an adjacency list and this is a simple example so for example let us take this we have a there is a b here there is a c here and there is a d here so if i have to create an adjacency list for this i can say that for a the adjacent vertices are b and d for b the adjacent vertex is c for c there is no vertex for d there is no vertex so these are pretty much empty so this is how an adjacency list is represented so next is as per our problem we can create our own graph data structure or use a map like how i said you can create a map like this where you say that this is the vertex a and there is a list of vertex like b and d next to a and for b there will be c for c and d there will be no entry in this map so it means that there is no adjacent vertex to c and d for pro we can say that it is space efficient because we are not using o of n square here we are using only o of v plus e because uh, we are storing the vertices each of these vertices are being stored and then whatever is the adjacent to a which is actually the edge so we are storing this and we are storing this so that is how it is little space efficient and getting all the neighbor is o of an operation because it's almost o of an operation if there is no has collision in case of map or if the data structure that you are creating if there is no collision in that particular case so it's o of one op, uh, o of one operation it's a constant time because you can simply say from this map dot get a if i say map dot get a what it means is it will give me the list of its adjacent adjacent uh, list basically so it, if i say map dot get a it will give me a list of vertices which will contain b and d so this is pro then adding vertex is easy you simply add an entry in this particular map now con for this is finding any edge is tough so if i have to say or if there is a problem where c which says that does c contains uh, or does c is adjacent to a or not so that will be a tough problem because i need to get the list of adjacent uh, list of a and there i have to linearly search whether c is present or not so this will be an order of e operation if i have to say that whether d is adjacent of a or not so i will get this list first which contains b and d and then linearly i have to search whether d is present in this list or not so since we the, these represent the edge so the time complexity for this is o of e so these are the way you represent any graph or this, this is the way you represent a graph in any programming language and these are were the basic of uh, graph theory or graph data structure so that is it for this particular video in the next one we'll learn about breadth first search and we'll see the actual code how breadth first search is implemented so thank you for watching do like subscribe and share take care bye